Let's talk about inositol. Many people take it for PCOS and insulin resistance, and some recommend it for sleep and mental health. But is there any evidence to support its use? Well, in this video, I'll tell you about some amazing benefits of inositol that are actually supported by scientific literature. And on the flip side, I also want to bring up some very common reported benefits of inositol which are just not supported by any strong evidence. And at the end of the video, we'll talk about important safety data and potential side effects you need to be aware of when you take the supplement. But first, what is inositol? Well, it's a sugar-like compound that is often referred to as vitamin B8, but it's not actually a vitamin. It's essential in many biochemical pathways in our bodies. And our body naturally synthesizes inositol mostly in our kidneys. Inositol is also found in foods that are rich in fiber, like beans, brown rice, and citrus fruits. And perhaps the most studied use of inositol is in the treatment of PCOS, or polycystic ovary syndrome. In a recent meta-analysis of 26 randomized control trials that included almost 1,700 patients, showed that using inositol was a safe and effective treatment for PCOS and it was found to be non-inferior when compared to the gold standard treatment with metformin. More specifically, it showed effect on BMI, free and total testosterone, and on glucose and insulin levels. And another meta-analysis of six randomized control trials published in gynecological endocrinology showed that treatment with inositol was better tolerated and had less adverse events than treatment with metformin. And since there are many different types of inositol, I want to highlight a 2019 randomized control trial that showed that a 40 to 1 ratio of myo-inositol to d inositol at 2 grams twice a day for 3 months was the most effective ratio to restore ovulation in women with PCOS. Inositol was also studied in gestational diabetes. In a recent systematic review and meta-analysis of 7 randomized control trials showed that 4 grams of myo-inositol per day significantly decreased the incidence of gestational diabetes, significantly decreased plasma glucose levels, and decreased the need for insulin treatment. It also reduced the incidence of preterm delivery and neonatal hypoglycemia, or low blood sugars. Next, there's also some solid evidence supporting the use of inositol in the treatment of metabolic health. A 2018 systematic review and meta-analysis of 14 randomized control trials show that inositol supplementation significantly decreased triglycerides and LDL cholesterol levels. Another randomized control study evaluated postmenopausal women with metabolic syndrome and found that treatment with myo-inositol at 2 grams twice daily for 12 months led to significant improvement in glucose and insulin levels, as well as decrease in markers of insulin resistance. Inositol also seems to have effect on your blood pressure, as a recent meta-analysis of seven randomized control trials showed that supplementation with inositol significantly decreased systolic and diastolic blood pressure, but the analysis did show a lot of heterogeneity and we would need much larger randomized control trials to validate these findings. By the way, if you are taking inositol, let me know in the comments below if you had any success with it and what brand you recommend and why. Now finally, many people take inositol for sleep or to help with mental health, but this is an area where the evidence supporting its use gets pretty weak. Some earlier studies noted that low levels of inositol in the brain and in the cerebrospinal fluid were seen in people suffering from depression and bipolar disorder. But subsequent studies that looked at inositol supplementation did not show any benefit in the treatment of depression when compared to placebo. There are some small studies that point to possible use of inositol in the treatment of anxiety or panic disorders. Like this one study, which was a very small, randomized control trial with only 21 patients that show comparable efficacy between inositol and fluvoxamine in reducing anxiety. But we do need much larger studies to evaluate its effectiveness in that sphere. In fact, a recent review paper published in February of this year noted that the use of inositol in the treatment of psychiatric disorders is still controversial, and we do not have enough evidence to recommend its use until we get more robust studies. Lastly, when it comes to safety, the usual side effects of inositol include nausea, headaches, and GI upset, but those usually occur at higher doses of 12 grams per day, which is much higher than the typical doses we see used in the treatment of PCOS or metabolic syndrome at about two to four grams per day. In addition to that, inositol is sold as a supplement and it's not regulated by the FDA. So I do recommend talking to your doctor before taking this or any other supplement. I hope this review was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.